Welcome Tango friends. I am sitting here on this snowy weekend, first of Advent tomorrow, and looking out, I will put a picture up here of what I'm looking at. Uh, we've already been snowed in once here for two days, and our, our snowplow farming farmer came by this morning and plowed once, but it is quickly being snowed over again. <laughs> We're supposed to go to the Advent Market this afternoon down in our village, and I don't think we're going to get there. So I am going to instead make this video for you. So I'm, I'm taking an existing tangle called Pendrels and I'm going to show you how I make it into mistly, like a little mistletoe for the holiday season. So uh, these are some of my examples and we're going to just do a basic, uh, I'm going to show you the basic step out and shading and then I'll let you take it from there. But this is what you can do. You could actually even use the what you come up with as your mistly as a kind of a string and add different tangles in there uh, or you know freeform tangling. Um, I made this one into a wreath and then another one that I'd like to show you that's really kind of cool is when I did my found about video I made this this page in my journal and all here I, I did this pendrels which I just had fallen in love with at the time it's it's just so organic Pendrels, of course, is from Zentangle headquarters. And then I decided I'm going to go ahead and make it into my little mistly or mistletoe. So I, I added my strokes on here and I'm going to show you how to do that now. So I'm going to be working with a, a Phi tile from Zentangle in white. You can use anything you want. Work right out of your sketchbook if you'd like. And then so I'm just going to keep the basic materials, which are either my PN or 01 micron pen in black and then a graphite pencil soft with my tortillon and my kneaded eraser. So let's get going and what we're going to do for this project is something that Zentangle headquarters or I don't know who said it maybe it was in they're calling this a tucker. A tucker is when you make a little slit for your stem of whatever you're going to be doing uh, to tuck through there, right? Well, I wanted to show you that Tucker is nothing new. It's nothing from Zentangle. It's not from anybody. It's been done in art for years, especially in um, botanical illustration. I taught a class on the botanical, what we consider our first botanical illustrator, Joris Hofnagel, uh, and I want to show you how he used Tucker in this beautiful book that I have. It's my most prized possession and most expensive piece that I own. It's from the Getty Museum and it's in limited edition so you can't like just go out and buy it. Um, it is from their uh, exhibit that they were showing of his work and it's called the Mira Calligraphie. It's called Mira Calligraphie Monumente. I'll have to ask my husband how to say that. He speaks Latin. It is a 16th century calligraphic manuscript and it was inscribed, that is, the calligrapher is Georg Boxe, 
and uh, it was illuminated. The illustrations were done by Joris Hufnagel, and this is in the 1500s. So it was done at the behest of Rudolf II, the emperor, and I actually saw this exhibit when I was a student in Austria 40 some years ago, and it, it was. I knew I would be revisiting it somehow in my mind because it was just so extremely special. I loved it. I, I was mesmerized by it. And that was before I was into botanical illustration at all. <laughs> so here is a tucker. And what you need to see is that these are done on vellum. And actually, Joris Hofnagel illustrated these, these this calligraphic um, model book of calligraphy actually afterwards 15 years after the artist who did all of the calligraphy had died so here is a tucker you can see him tucking it actually using the long strokes of the letters to tuck it under with but i wanted to show you the back side of this it's what you would see on the vellum so isn't that just so cool? And that, that's happened a couple times. Here's another one. He's done it many, many times. This book is just to die for. Um, but here's a beautiful tucker that we're going to really model ours after today. And on the back, you can see how it's tucked through on the backside in the vellum. Look at his beautiful illustrations. Aren't they incredible? He even does what we don't do anymore in botanical illustration he uses drop shadows isn't that very special here's one more that he has done i don't think the back side of this one no the back side of that one is not showing on this folio but here's here's some more tuckers for you <laughs> so i thought i would share that with you because um i don't you know i just want you to know that Really, there's nothing new under the sun in terms of art. <laughs> Everything's out there. It's been there for a long time. So I'm going to just start right out with my O1 pen and make my tucker. I'm going to do it down here in the lower left corner. I'm left-handed, so you might want to do it on the right side. And I'm going to start with my mistletoe-like stem. I am calling this mistly. L E Y, and it's based on pen drills by Zentangle. So I should write that on here. <clears throat> All right, so let's do our stem. This one's going to be a little bit thicker it's holding up the thinner branches but I just want you to see what's going on especially you can make it as thin or as thick as you want now we're going to make a top like that and color it in I'm going to do an aura line a thin one and then some nodes I'm going to put generally um, Maria does two but because I want to make this a three-pronged stem up here I'm going to put three nodes so I'm going to put one stem coming this way one stem this way and one this way and then we're going to do that same treatment two nodes here and you don't even have to do those nodes I just think they add a lot of character and let's start up here and we are going to make our first mistly okay let's do big long kind of rabbit ear like leaves and they really do 
fan out like rabbit ears. I brought in from outside some real, some real mistletoe. It's all over in our, our area here. Let me show you this one to try to get it. But as you can see, sometimes there's just two stems, sometimes there's three, and sometimes there's uh, these kind of leaf shapes coming down and some going up. This one's branching out new. But where is one here? You can see here they are branching down. The leaves are coming down. But a lot of times there's another one up here and another here. Sometimes these are, are they just lose their leaves. And though we're not trying to do a botanical illustration here, we do um, take our inspiration from nature, right? So that's what I'm going to do. The other thing that I'm going to do is make some veins. If you look at these, if you look at this, you can see it on this one. See on the leaf shape how there are veins? There's like four to five veins on the underside of the leaf or upper side. I'm not even sure which side it is, but I'm going to take that as an inspiration to add texture to my my leaves here then it won't look so much like a rabbit ear <laughs> so this is um, and then i did the berry the little white berry which is kind of like our moon berry you can make like a little star uh, center there and then just keep on building. This is going to go off the page. And this one's going to be oriented up a little bit. And then I'm going to do another one down here. And sometimes I noticed that there are like three berries. And there's even sometimes berries in here. So just, you know, you can... Play with this as you wish. I'm going to make one long one like that. I've seen that happen as well. Nice big berry here. I'm going to make another little node. This is what I've often seen. Like there's three little berries. Yeah, so one more. And of course, with the berries, if you want to be botanically correct, these would be like these little white translucent berries. Uh, but you could make them red, you could make them gold, you can do whatever you want. And in fact, I switch it up here and use the center of my Eros. Go check out my, my uh, Eros tutorial and that's how it starts, right? And it, make such a pretty little bud in there too. So you don't have to be botanically correct. This is Entangle. You can do whatever you want, which is what is so freeing as a botanical illustrator. Fill in those little interstices. Um, and then you just keep building how you want. Let's see, what did I do? Let's do another one coming off here. I'm going to do an overlapping one so I can show you some shading cup technique there. I like that it's so open and lacy and kind of spindly. It's a great way to loosen up a free form zentangle. Or a wreath. Of course, I made a whole wreath out of mine, but you, you could even just add a sprig here or there into your other types of wreaths uh, that you use different tangles for. 
You can combine it with last week's tutorial with the star. So many ideas. So this is the basic stroke or the basic step out. But what you want to do then is to enhance with some weighted line. Like I'm going to weight this line here. A little bit on the stems here and there. Just ever so often. You don't want to do too much. Otherwise it's not lively anymore. This is what we call in pen and ink lively line. Oh my gosh, I hear the plow. Yes, we might actually make it to the market. I'm so excited. You can just spend as much time on this as you want. I just wanted to show you some some of the things I would do. Uh, and I probably will spruce this up a little more too. I would also add a frame to this. I'm going to get my P in for that. Just grounds this a little bit better, makes it a little bit more interesting. Break, um, you could even break the plane up here with another. Here we did some breaking of the plane. It's a nice compositional element. Okay, so let me show you how I would shade. So I would just go, first of all, like I often do on my stems, on the right hand side of the stem, keeping the left and light. And then underneath these nodes, add some graphite. You're going to want to make your berries spherical. We've done so many berries, I don't really need to explain to you how to do that. If it's big enough, you can leave a little bit of a um, reflective light there. And then we're going to add some graphite to the center of our cluster and a little bit on maybe one side of the leaf shape. Let's start there, and then we're going to blend. Often you can just use what's on your tortillon. Before I completely finish it, I want to point something out because I'll do that and uh, speed, it, speed it up. Wherever there is an overlap, just like with our halibut, we, we want to add some graphite to indicate that there's like this air space between those two things that are overlapping. It really lifts it up and it makes it re much more believable. It's a very simple technique, but it adds so much. some really dark darks in there. And you'll take your time. I'm just doing this quickly to show you where where I would suggest shading. could even emphasize a line here or there from those veins that we added, right? Yeah, and then just 
go back in and finesse and enhance. Maybe make your beef your frame up some. But most importantly, let's go ahead and do our tucker. And let's take Joris Herfnagel as our inspiration. Okay, so if you notice, he's got some shading going on underneath, almost in an, um, an elliptical matter here. And a little at the top and a little on one side. Not on the left, because that's where the light is coming from. So that's what we're going to try to aim for. So I'm going to do a little bit here. A little bit up here. And then some here. And if it's a little too much, just get that. Yeah, there's our little tucker. How fun is that? Well, I hope you enjoy Mistly, and I would love to see some of your creations. Carol, you're on my Facebook page, and you've been doing so many ideas for cards, or Polly. Um, all of you, I, I enjoy seeing what you create. So do share with me what you come up with. Maybe combine it with the star, uh, make a wreath, do some calligraphy, have a lot of fun with Mistly and stay warm and have a great week. Have a great weekend first and enjoy some hot drinks and the seasonal changes, which we're doing right now. Thanks again. See you next time.